Hi again, everybody. So today we're going to be making a Q-tip maze. So the materials we're going to need are a pile of Q-tips, a piece of paper, a pen or a pencil, um, some scissors maybe, and something, some kind of character, a little tiny object that you can uh, move through your maze to see how it's going at the end, to see if it works or if you need to change some things. Okay, so to get started, we need to talk about what a maze is. So a maze is a type of puzzle where you have to try and get from the start to the finish or the beginning to the end. And mazes can be very complicated or they can be very simple. So depending on your age level or how much patience you have, um, you might want to make it um, very easy to get from the beginning to the end or maybe you like a challenge or you're gonna have someone in your family try this activity. Um, and you want to try and challenge them so your maze could have a few more dead ends and a lot more twists and turns. So first we're going to begin by laying out the maze and with a layout it's kind of like a blueprint. So when we use the engineering design process we like to have a plan. Um, you are more than welcome to not make a plan and just start using the q-tips to make a maze but if you end up cutting any q-tips for some smaller spots in your maze you may run out of material so it's always good to have a plan so i would suggest taking a pencil or a pen and draw out a few different maze plans to see which one you seem to like the best you can always go on the internet and look up some mazes just to get some ideas for yourself as to get started it did take me a little while to kind of make one too so you want to figure out where you want to start and finish so maybe you want to label one side of your paper for the start and maybe you want to finish at the bottom that way you kind of know what your goal is and where you have to make your path and a maze can have more than one way to the finish line too so that can also be another component that you may want to include so i already have one made um, mine is pretty pretty simple um, I started at one corner of the paper and finished at the other end. I did make it as big as my paper. You don't have to, or maybe you have some big uh, pieces of paper at home you can use for this as well. So you can, like I said before, you can design it to be as complex or as simple and easy as you want. You can have as many different paths or dead ends. So by a dead end, I mean, I'm gonna use this little unicorn here if I start here and I follow this path and I turn here there's nowhere to go okay there I can't go any further that's called a dead end so that could be a tricky part um, in, a, in a few different spots in your maze um, there should be at least one way to get from the start to the finish but like I said you can have more than one um, most of the lines are going to be straight lines I think all of mine are straight if you're very creative and you want to make one that's circular or maybe like spiral in shape you can do that as well um, and like I said, maybe plan your start and your finish first so you know uh, what the end result should be. So once you have a plan, you can take your Q-tips and you can start lining them up on your lines like this. And that one worked out pretty good. So as you're doing this, if you see that you need a shorter ones for right here, you can take a pair of scissors and just be careful. These will go flying everywhere and you can do that to fill in the space. And then maybe I can use this one about here. It doesn't need to line up perfect. Um, you just wanna do your best to cover up your lines. So I'm gonna keep doing this. So while we're creating the maze, um, we can talk a little bit about these, maze, these mazes and what it helps you with. So mazes are definitely good critical thinking puzzles. It's a good way to get your brain thinking outside the box and trying to problem solve sometimes in multiple ways to get to the same finish. It looks like I need to cut a bunch of these. I'm gonna use that one here. Um, if you like say Sudoku puzzles or you like maybe some mystery shows on TV with detectives and policemen, they have a lot of really good critical thinking practice and develop a lot of good critical thinking skills because they have to solve um, some pretty crazy problems in their line of work and they have to think quick they have to be able to think on their feet and if one thing doesn't work they have to be able to try something else without giving up because that's their job so some people have a really good 
sense of, uh, or an urgency that they, they want to figure something out. And that's how I am. Things bother me. If I can't figure it out, I'm like, I got to figure it out. And it kind of stresses me. And even though things get frustrating and it might take you a little longer, the end result is always good. When you finally do come up with a, an answer, you kind of feel really good about yourself. And that's kind of build your confidence in that respect. So it's good to be able to try and problem solve. Um, and think of those solutions if one doesn't work, move on to the next and move on to the next. I know a lot of times they say in my STEM class, if plan A doesn't work, we move on to plan B. And if plan B doesn't work, we move on to plan C. And we go on and on and on all the way to Z. And if Z doesn't work, we got to start all over and go back to A. So good skills, good problem solving. Um, we also think if you like to watch sports, there are sports medicine doctors that work with football players and soccer teams and baseball teams and if somebody gets hurt on the field or on a court they have to be able to assess the situation pretty quick so that they know how to to treat the the player so that they can get back out and keep playing the game so they have to think quick too so it's all about these problem solving skills and being able to think think quick on your feet depending on the situation so these skills are really good to develop as you work um, as you work through each grade level, I'm just going to crawl, no, maybe not, um, even at school, because when you get stuck, say, on a math problem, I used to teach math, kids get really, you get really frustrated when you can't figure something out, and we have to kind of teach ourselves how to calm down and maybe start over, um, till we, till we get where we need to be, and that's not always easy to do either. But so these, even though you're solving a puzzle, it can help you in many other aspects of your life and at school and maybe you get in arguments with your brother and sister and your parents and you have to know how to calm down and, and start over and solve the problem in a calmer way. So these puzzles can help you in lots of different ways, not just puzzles and video games but in, in your everyday life too. So we are almost finished here, I'm trying to use every last piece that I can, and I might actually overlap this one here just because. Okay, so I think I have my maze finished. So now that I have it done, I'm gonna test it out. So you can, I actually have a marshmallow, you can use a marshmallow. I'm gonna use my little, um, unicorn here so if i start here i already traveled here and that was a dead end so i have to go this way and i need it something a little smaller here's another dead end so i have to travel this way i might swap this out because i feel like my paths are a little narrow so i can move around here use my marshmallow if i go over here there's another dead end whoops you can even glue these down if you wanted to. You just have to wait till it dries and then I wouldn't be moving them. I'm gonna hop over that. I can see if I can make it this way. If I go up here, there's another dead end. I'm gonna go back around. That's too big and squeeze through. My paths are a little narrow and I'm getting stuck on my, oh boy. Making a mess of this. Okay, we're, I'm gonna use my pen. So make sure your paths are wide enough for your character object to fit through. So I'm just gonna do this. So down, around, dead end, gotta back out, come up, around, over here. This is a little narrow. Cut through here, down, around that's supposed to be there so maybe gluing this would be a good idea and out through the finish so lots of dead ends not super complicated but enough that i did hit a couple dead ends in a couple different spots so have fun with your maze uh, like i said you can always look on the internet to find some ideas just to kind of get you started because i it did take me a couple tries to get this maze completed too before i put the q-tips on but it's a lot of fun challenge your family challenge your friends Feel free to glue down your Q-tips and then you don't have to worry about them moving as much as Mayan did. So I hope you enjoy this activity and you come up with some really great mazes.